Hey everybody, I'm Michelle with Birdie Bloom and we're gonna talk about a bit about this bag and the Lexington line in general. I haven't talked about, well, I sort of talked about it. This was a bag featured a while ago in a video but wasn't really talked heavily about. This is um, the number 4181 Lexington bucket bag. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this line. So the Lexington collection was new in 1998 and I'm gonna flip this um, catalog photo around and I'm gonna read the little insert here that Coach put in about this line. And it says, the Lexington Collection, the essence of all that is modern and minimalist, a new collection of lightweight styles in supple shapes and seasonal colors. And I thought that was brilliant because it truly describes this line. Um, and I think the word that I like the most is minimalist um, to describe this line. This is an extremely lightweight bag and it has no hardware owing to the minimalist, no hardware on the extension. The straps, and this is gonna be the case for all of the bags in the Lexington line, they're not like separate, you know, they're not connected in any way. They are a part of the bag. Um, so there's that. We'll talk about a couple other things that make the Lexington the Lexington collection. But this is the 4181 Lexington bucket. Here's a catalog photo. And I am going to show you, this is uh, two other kind of like bucket-like bags or totes, because I kind of consider this a tote more than a bucket. Um, here we have the 4182 Lexington Shopper. It is five inches taller and three inches wider. And then the 4187 Lexington Satchel, which is a little smaller than this bag. So um, the one I'm showing you is kind of mid-sized to those. And they're all, even though they were all called something different, a satchel, a shopper, um, a bucket, I kind of consider these little bags totes. And um, they're very tote-like. And yeah, this one's kind of in between. So let's see. Some of the features that you're gonna see on the Lexington line is the coach embossing. I'm trying to find it on this bag. Sorry, my lighting is not that great, aside from what I'm using here. This little coach embossing here that is seen on every single bag in the Lexington collection. And that's not a common thing to see in vintage coach bags, right? And then um, the lack of hardware. There's not gonna be any hardware on the outside. Um, I believe every single bag, from what I can see and, um, you know, looking at all that I, is available online, I believe that all of them would come um, with nickel, a nickel ball chain and coach tag. These should have come with a, um, a coach tag. I just, um, neither one of them have them in my possession, but it would have been nickel because all of the zipper hardware on the inside is nickel and so is the button. So. Um, button, the little closure button here. Um, and in this case, this is how this bag closes. Uh, something else you might have noticed is that the bag is lined. And I'm gonna pull this lining out. I'm gonna show you what kind of lining it is. I think this is imperative because this would owe to um, authenticating this bag. I, when I was doing my research before this video, you see it's this black lining with this like little coach in black on it. It's hard to, it can be hard to see in pictures, but I saw some counterfeits, uh, Lexington counterfeits, Lexington line counterfeits. And um, that was something I would notice in them, aside from the creed not being right, uh, I would see uh, the lining not being right. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so far, every single authentic uh, Lexington that I have seen from the Lexington collection, sorry, I'm. I'm trying to specify that because there is actually a briefcase called the Lexington and it's not a part of the Lexington collection. Totally different bag. Just like the Madison collection, there is actually a bag called the Madison Satchel. Nothing like the Madison collection. So just to uh, put that out there. But yeah, they all have lining, that lining with that black lining with the coach on it. Okay. Um, so I think that is really all, I mean, there's a drawstring bag, there's a flat bag. There are other things out there, but we're just gonna talk about the tote today. 
Um, and I'm gonna specifically go over this a little bit more. Um, something else that I've noticed, and this is what I was actually, when I was researching this bag, this is what I was specifically looking for. Uh, yeah, why I was doing um, more intensive research is I used to think that these bags were only made in Italy uh, because that's all I had ever seen. And then I came across the Dominican Republic um, Lexington and I realized that they were made both in Italy, that's where this red bag was made, and the Dominican Republic. I'm trying to compare leathers. I mean, they're both lovely, lovely, lovely. So um, that had me wondering if my perception that these were just made in Italy was wrong. And I mean, obviously it was, they're made in the Dominican Republic, but I wanted to see if they were made in any other country. And my research showed that I did not see any authentic bags made in any other country besides Italy and the Dominican Republic. Um, and why I'm specifying that is I saw two bags uh, that were made in the United States in the Lexington line, but they were counterfeit. The first one had an E country code and said made in the United States. E is for Italy. Um, I'm not gonna get into the details about that because that, this can get a little bit more complicated, but um, I noticed that as a counterfeit um, just from the creed. So then I went to look at more things that I could see from the pictures and I discovered in that case that the lining was wrong. It was actually, they had the stripe lining that you see in Sonoma lining, uh, the Sonoma bag. So it's a, a vintage coach looking lining, but it's not the correct lining for that line. So that was just an additional thing that helped to confirm to me that that bag is counterfeit. And so, so far, I'm not really seeing that they're made in the United States. And then I found another one that was made in the United States. And this one could be a little bit more confusing. Um, the Creed had read J4H. Um, and with that made in the United States, all of that could be appropriate, except for J4H would mean that the bag was uh, made in 1994. And I just got done telling you that this bag, um, or the collection did not come out until 1998. So that also confirmed, uh, amongst some other things that I could see from the photos, that one didn't have as many photos, but that would tell me that that bag was also probably most likely counterfeit. Um, though I would like to see some other things with that. So, um, those two things. Uh, so I only found Italy and Dominican Republic. So these bags, this line was only made in Italy and the Dominican Republic so far as I can tell. Okay. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, both. I, I love the leather from both of those countries as well. Some of my favorites. Um, oh, sorry. I'm doing a lot of umming. So with all of that being said, uh, I obviously have found a couple of counterfeits. Be careful when you're buying these bags. I saw more authentic than counterfeits, but just be a little bit more weary is all, okay? Uh, let's try her on. Let's try, let me bring down the camera. I think these bags are underrated, these little totes. I adore them. I think they fit really well under the arm. Um, they're, like I said, lightweight. The leather is, it's not gonna be the same as your really thick um, glove tan leather, but it's its still so lovely. And I know, you know, the Vintage Coach collector was just talking about this as well in one of her recent videos. And I've mentioned this before, and one of my favorite lines is the Sonoma line, and those bags are lined. Some people get it in their head, um, especially when you're new and starting, out and collecting vintage coach that you don't want a line bag. The line bag means that it's it's not good. Um, and that's not the case at all. This is still a vintage bag. The Sonoma collection, my favorite, has is lined. And I'm gonna tell you why a lined bag is actually phenomenal. Because look at this, it comes out. You can flip it, clean it, spot clean it, whatever. Get all the crumbs out. I mean, I have little boys. And one of the more common bags that I carry is a Sonoma bag with them or multiple Sonoma bags. And I can't tell you how many, I clean that bag every single time I go out with them because it gets disgusting. They put things in my bag. Um, they put fishy crackers in my bag. They are gross. So I need an easy way of cleaning. And if my bag was raw lined, that wouldn't be so easy people. So huge benefit. Another really great thing about this bag, which I adore, 
in this lining, we have two zipper pockets. So we have a pocket here. It doesn't go the full length, but it's like half of the length of the entire bag and another zipper pocket, which allows you to organize better, right? Love it. Like that's where I would put my keys or my wallet or something. Cause you know, if you stuff this bag, which we're gonna do actually for this video, um, it can, it can, things might get a little lost. So not as bad as uh, a duffel sack. And that's what I wanted to test. I wanted to see, I'm gonna grab the brown one here. I didn't do this before the video. I wanted to see if the things that I typically carry when I go out with my boys would fit in here, because I suspect they will. The bag I carry is bigger. The bag I, I say it as if there's only one bag. That's funny, because there's not just one bag. But when I think of like, oh, well, I need to bring a lot of stuff, the bag that I gravitate towards is a duffel sack. It's a Sonoma line duffel sack. But um, I, I think that the stuff I would put in there will fit in here. So we're gonna test it out, okay? Totally underrated bag, I swear. First, I'm gonna take advantage of these zipper pockets and I'm going to put my favorite SLG, I've told you this guys, this is the 7219 multifunction purse. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm also gonna put my little key wallet. Um, I wanna show you guys something. I'm obsessed with these things. It's one of my favorite accessories as well. I only have one key in here. This is my house key. I recently got a Tesla, and um, so I just have a little card key for that, which I don't even use, but I have that as an in case of backup. But I'm still gonna carry this thing everywhere with me because I'm just obsessed. Yeah, just one key, but I still love how it goes in there, and it just keeps everything nice and cozy, and it's a nice hand feel. Love it, so I'm gonna put that in there. Um, and that's just gonna be in that upper pocket. I have another pocket. I don't think I need to really put anything else in there as far as um, organizing, or maybe I will. Okay, so there's that. And then I typically bring some sort of case, sometimes smaller, sometimes bigger. In this case, this is what I'm carrying often. It's one of the Sonoma cases. I've talked about it in another video. I'm gonna throw that in there. I always have to have, when I'm going out with my boys, wipes, throw that in there. And in this case, beach please. Um, this thing is old, I love it, but uh, I have diapers in here and I'm gonna throw that in here. It's also can serve as like a, a wet pack, like keep things dry. Like I could put wet things in there if I needed to. Um, and so I don't get everything dirty. Now I haven't tried this to see if this all will fit. Um, and in this case, I might not use, we're gonna keep it, but I might not use this. I might just put the diapers in there if I were to carry this bag. Okay, so got a couple of other things that I always need to bring. A water for my boys um, when I am going out with them because I don't wanna carry a whole bunch of water. I make them drink from the same cup. I'm a cruel mom. And then a uh, tea or a water for myself. So let's see, uh, this has a closed top so I could throw it in like that. I might not go with it. Um, sorry, just seeing if I can fit it all in here. Haven't done it yet. But I usually like to have a drink for myself. So, yep, that's going in there so far. Not going to be able to close, uh, but uh, I got more guys. <laughs> well, here, let's hold it and see. Because this is all like that I would necessarily start. This is what I might start out with. It's, you know. It's full, it's, uh, but it works. It actually feels really comfortable on my shoulder. Um, like I said though, I'm not done. I'm probably gonna end up with some toys uh, before or after, because sometimes the kids are incessant on me bringing toys. Oh, so you know what? I'm gonna use this other zipper pouch and I'm gonna put them in there. Throw those cars in there so they don't get lost or if the bag, you know, tips over. And uh, because the weather is crazy in North Carolina where I'm at, um, it will be 60 degrees and then a couple hours later, it's like 80. Um, I'm gonna have to throw my boys long sleeve shirts in my bag because they're wanting them off now because it's, uh, you know, as I'm running around chasing them because it's, uh, it's hot now. Yeah. So throw those in there too. My bag goes out with certain things, but then it comes home with more. 
Oh, you know what? I didn't put snacks and stuff in here because normally I'd have a couple of snacks, but um, I could actually fit them in here. So that's definitely possible. Um, and yeah, it works. It's overflowing, but typically my bags are by the end of the day with my boys if I'm out and about with them for a while. And it does hold it all. It's a small tote, but it holds a lot. So, okay. Yeah, that's doable. Let's see, I'm gonna take my water out. How does that look? Yeah. My absolute necessity is in here right now. Oh, I didn't put my phone in there, but um, I'm filming with my phone. Here's my phone case that also will go in there. And I might even put that, oftentimes I just have that in my back pocket too when I'm out, if I have a back pocket. But, yep. Okay, well that's it <laughs> for you. The Lexington line number 4181 Lexington bucket bag. An underrated bag, an underrated line. These bags are lightweight leather, even though they're not part of the Soho lightweight line, they are lightweight. They lack hardware, so they're not flashy. They're simple, they're minimalistic, and they are nice. I love that there's a lining in it, easy to clean, pull out and clean and dump, you know, crumbs and whatnot out. Um, I love that there's zipper pockets inside of them because it creates a little bit more organization in a bag. You know, Vintage Coach typically lacks that and they're great. They feel wonderful, they're soft, and even if they get scratched up, um, they actually do bounce back pretty nicely. Um, usually just conditioning it really helps to even out the color. Uh, like this bag, this brown one, it was pretty scuffed and it looks great now. So just from conditioning. But all right, there you go. Well, I hope you liked my video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more Vintage Coach bag talks. Um, and if you want to see more Vintage Coach pictures, then uh, hop over to my Facebook group, Vintage Coach Eye Candy, and uh, join that group so you can see pictures and post your own if you'd like to. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.